Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Justin Charles, and Josh All. We're excited to welcome to the show now, Chops. You guys know him from it, formerly Twitter Spaces, now X Spaces. Man, <laughs> we appreciate you being here with us, sitting down, talking some Browns football. Of course. What's up, fellas? How we doing? Uh, it, we're almost there. It's uh, Football is in the air. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I, uh, it's like right around the corner. Uh, it's cool to finally meet you, by the way. I obviously see, see you guys on social media, so to sit down with you, this is really cool. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the Browns season. Yep. Well, what do you... What are you most looking forward to this season? Do you think it's like uh, some a little bit of the retold defense? Do you think the Ken Dorsey? What do you think of Ken Dorsey? What do you think he's going to do the offense? Just what, what's your outlook? Yeah, I think to me it's like the new offense with Ken Dorsey. You know, just kind of based on what I've heard, it's like really playing into what Deshaun does well. You know, it's going back to okay that open spread QB kind of all right. It's it's laid out. Here's what I want to do. Here's my options and kind of go. Uh, a little bit more freedom, I would say. And, that, like, there's no – Kevin's fancy is a great offensive play caller, great offensive mind. The blending of his system with Ken Dorsey's system. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at the knock on Ken Dorsey when he was in Buffalo, he couldn't run the ball. Right. You know? And, and that was a big problem. Kevin's fancy is one of the best minds of the running game in football. So you're blending together a very good spread quarterback pass offense with Kevin Stefanski's uh, run, run initiatives – and to me, that's super exciting, especially when you have like a talent like Deshaun Watson. Uh, Nick Chubb will be back eventually. You have Jerry Judy added to the mix, who is a guy that's a, a yak receiver. The Browns have never had, at least in this iteration of them, a receiver where you get them the ball and he runs after the catch yes. and, and is elusive. That is Jerry Judy, you know? So to me, that's the most exciting thing, this, how this offense comes together um, under Dorsey and, and, and they kind of, you know, uh, make that work. But, you know, it's, I just love football. You know, like we're, it's here, Greenbrier next week. Like, I just, I love that we're back in it, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Up here at a high school football event, I love high school football, especially yep. here in Ohio. It's big time. Yep. Uh, a couple of things you mentioned. Do you think, do you think Ken Dorsey calls plays this year? Or do you think Kevin holds on to that? I, I think eventually, like, I think it will be Dorsey. But again, it's so collaborative. And like any, anytime you hear the Browns talk, Andrew Barry, Kevin Stefanski, Dorsey, whoever, Deshaun, it's all about collaboration. You know, so I, I I, don't think it's as, like, cut and dry as, like, oh, I'm calling plays, I'm calling plays. I think it's going to be so collaborative. Like, Andy Dickerson's going to have a say in mm-hmm. what's going on. Mm-hmm. Play, you know? Yes. Uh, 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 Deuce Staley's going to be in, in, in the mix. It's going to be so like that. And, and my thing, yeah, Kevin's a great play caller. Kevin, even more than that, that people don't realize, is a great schemer of the offense in the leading up. Like, in, in the week leading up, that's where Kevin really shines and coming up with, like, all right, how can we expose these defenses? So, like, as long as Kevin's involved in that, I'm good, and there's no indication that he would never be taken out of that. So, even if it is Dorsey calling plays, I don't think it's as big of a deal as kind of – I, I, I know, like, fans and media, like, yeah, we love yeah. to talk yeah. about that, but I really think it's, like, a little overblown about who actually is telling Deshaun what the play is. You I know? think it's fans just kind of – we need we're something. To, we need and, something to talk about. They're, 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 we're Browns fans, so we just panic mode all the time. <laughs> That's true. That, that <laughs> in panic mode all the time. I don't know how many people I had like say after the Brandon Ayuk news broke yesterday. We got to trade for Brandon Ayuk. I was like, like huh. God, no, we don't need to trade for Brandon Ayuk. Like, like everybody, just <laughs> yeah. calm down. Yes. But it, it's like. You're right. We need something to talk about all the time. There's not going to be really many training camp battles no. because this team is so deep. Yeah. You know, like you look at it, maybe the fourth, fifth defensive tackle spot. I think it, the roster stuff gets interesting when we you get up to like the cut points it, and it, stuff like that. It, it, exactly. It, it, but it's not like this isn't the 2017 Browns where we have a QB competition between uh, Cody Kessler. Yeah. And, you know, so it's like right. it's like we have to find things to talk about. And obviously the play caller one is going to be number one on that list. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned Nick Chubb being back sometime this year. Did you see the workout video? I did. I mean, he's – look, my thought in everything I've heard about Nick Chubb is they're going to give him time to get back. Then you see that video and you're like, this dude isn't human. Like, what is, like, what is this? He just had – like his whole, I was at the Pittsburgh game, never going back to Pittsburgh, by the way. I will never step foot <laughs> that. in that city again. He, his whole knee, two knee surgeries, and he's squatting, what, 500 pounds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With that loose bar, too. It's- I, I, would, I would just caution fans, you know, we see the videos, we see all that. Still give him time. Yeah. Like, don't put a week one expectation on it. I would be pretty surprised if he's playing week one. Let him work his way back. Uh, and, and I think that's good for the Browns. Not, not having to rush Nick Chubb back is going, 
go, having him fresh for later in the season is going to be more important to me than getting him early in the season. Agreed. Yep. So while we're, we're kind of waiting for him to get back and then working him in, the running back room, what are your thoughts? We, we had uh, Aiden Robbins on, mm-hmm. and, and we really like that guy. He's a big yep. guy. Yep. But obviously, Jerome Ford coming off a season in which he was uh, – maybe efficiency wasn't crazy high through the roof, but mm-hmm. statistically he was productive. Yep. Um, and then we go, we go get a guy like Devontae Foreman. How do you see the running back room shaking out behind Nick Chubb? I think – to me, I understand why it's a question mark. And again, it goes back to the Dorsey thing. Dorsey teams in the past, the running game has been a little bit of a question mark. So I understand that. To me, if you go back and watch Jerome Ford last season, when he when Watson was playing and they ran out of the shotgun a lot with Jerome Ford, he was very successful. It was when it, it, Jerome Ford, it comes from that, that, that. That's how he likes to run. That's how he does it. So going to that shotgun system more with Jerome Ford, I think can be very successful. I love Foreman, played with Deshaun in Houston before. He's a back where if you go watch him last year in Chicago, he, I think, can give you more than Kareem Hunt gave you last season. And, Kareem, agree, and yeah. Kareem Hunt gave you a lot last season. You know, I think Naheem Hyams, everything I've heard, he's going to be full go, mm-hmm. training camp day one, which is big. He's going to be a receiving back out of the backfield. I think he's going to be productive in a lot of motion, a lot of jet sweep type stuff. Um, Robbins, I think I've heard good things about probably – Maybe like a practice squad, but he's going to get opportunities. John Kelly is still in the Browns, longest tenured Brown, mm-hmm. I think. Yep. I, I'm hopeful about the running back room. I think that they can do more than enough until Chubb kind of and let him ease back up. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think there's. I think we added a lot of depth back there. Yep. You mentioned uh, Naheem Himes. I kind of think of him in a, a kick returner role, also. Yep. Oh yeah. What do you oh, yeah. think of the new return? Um, the new return role. How mm-hmm. do you think it's? A way I looked at it when it was first announced was it not only does it affect strategy in-game, it almost affects roster building because you might have had a guy who was a uh, a fringe player, but if mm. you think he's going to be an absolute threat in the kick return game, now you might be forced to make a decision where this guy never had a chance to make it. But if you think he's going to be a threat back there, now maybe he's working his way into the conversation. And even more than that, I think it affects the roster in a number of ways. James Prochet, if – it wasn't for this new kick return system, maybe he wouldn't make the roster, but he's probably going to be your six wide receiver because you, by the rule of the new kick return, you have to have two guys back to return. Yep. So James Prochet is probably that other guy, but then you look at it on both sides. They drafted Nathaniel Watson, I think, specifically for the new kick return. He's a big linebacker. He, he, he is like built for this new kick return system. I think you could see how it impacts how many linebackers they keep on the team. Maybe they keep less corners because the whole point of the last kick return was you had the gunners, you know, mm-hmm. speed to get down there. That's not really the game anymore. It's like more like blocking and tackling, so you might need some bigger guys. But, yeah, I think Naheem Hines is going to be an absolute weapon back there. I'm curious to see if the coaches if – if it gets too chaotic and coaches just say, you know what, kick it out of the end zone, start at the 30. Because it's, I think week one, we're going to see minimum like three touchdowns on the new kick return. Yeah. Because it's good. No one's going to know what to do. You're going to have some trick plays going on. And I think coaches will be like, you know what? Screw it. Kick it out. 30 yard line. I think you said like how you were talking about the blocking and all that stuff. Like literally you set a good block up and a guy makes a move and he could be gone now. Yeah. I mean, literally to the house. Exactly. It's like, it's, it's a completely different play. Yeah. And I think in the preseason, that's where we're going to see it. Like Bubba's already said it. I'm using that preseason. I'm going to show way more right. than I would because one, no one's done it before. You have to do it in these preseason games. You have to like actually run it. So it, it, it's going to be fascinating to see. But I do wonder if we get to that point where coach is like, no, it's too much of a variable. Mm-hmm. I don't want it. We're not losing a game because of, spe- of special teams, right. basically, you know. Do you think there's uh, – I've heard whisperings, and I don't know if it's true or not. I love that, whisperings. That, yeah, <laughs> that the Chiefs who had considered – Justin Reed. Yeah, it, yeah, you know, other people kicking off because they don't want to get their kicker hurt. Do you think that the Browns do something like that? I don't even know if it's they don't want to get their kicker hurt. They want another weapon to, to, run, to run down there and tackle. I bu- – Bubba was asked about that at minicamp, and he was very clear. The kickoff is going to be kind of an art with this because it's almost like – a chip shot in golf. Yep. You're, you're 70 yards out. You want you want to be able to hit like a dart, like very precise. He believes Dustin Hopkins has the ability to precisely kick the ball because it's going to be, hey, if you can like kind of, it's almost like the coffin quarter punt mm-hmm. coming back. So I think the Browns won't go that way. I don't even believe the Chiefs are going to do that. I think Andy Reid, putting it a little gamemanship, you know, like trying to throw it off. Um, 
But I, I, I think the Browns are going to go. Dustin Hopkins, let him do it. You know, got more of a precise, precision type uh, plan there. This episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Dog pack, the summer's in full swing, and you guys know what that means. Omaha Steaks annual hotter than fire sale. Go to omahasteaks.com right now and for a limited time, you guys can get big savings on great packages from Omaha Steaks for just $99. Plus, you guys can get an extra $10 off that order with promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, at checkout. So these packages with that promo code are essentially $89. From exquisite steaks to legendary burgers, the premium pork, the air chilled chicken, the the meatballs, the chicken wings, the appetizers, the ready to eat meals, the wine, everything that Omaha Steaks has to offer, Head over there today, check it out. Shop the Hotter Than Fire sale to get these exclusive savings on the mouthwatering packages that start at just $99 plus. Use that code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out for an extra $10 off your order. But hurry, because this sale is only available for a limited time. Summer always flies by, and this deal is going to fly by, so you're not going to want to miss it. Go shop today, omahasteaks.com. Use promo code DOGS at checkout for an extra $10 off your order. So I, I wanted to switch the other side of the ball a little yep. bit real quick. Um, obviously, the Browns' defense last year, amazing. Yep. Okay. Uh, but there was clearly a, a huge contrast between the way they played at home versus the way they play on the road. Yeah. How do you think – do you think there's any reason why in terms of – other than just, just it's different play on the road, and how do you think they, they correct it heading into this year? I, I, You ask people, and, like, everybody kind of gives you the same answer is – the company line is basically we just have to be better on the road. You know, it, it wasn't any rhyme or reason that that it that it was different. I think I, I think what it is is one Browns fans are the best fans in the world. So playing in front of them, that energy that the crowd is giving you, it matters. Like anybody who tells you that doesn't matter is, is lying. It yep. matters. Two, I think it's just I I, I think they. Like, you look at the games where they really gave up stuff on the road. Like, the, going into the indie game, they were coming off the San Francisco game, right? Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. They were at the top of their world. They were like, we're unbeatable. I think they took Indy a little light. A little light. They were like, it's Gardner Minshew. We're, we're fine. I don't think they were prepared. Indy also runs a lot of misdirection, which, to Jim Schwartz's defenses, is the one that we saw in the Houston playoff Houston, game. Yeah. Yep. Bobby Sloak ran that perfectly. So, I think it's more of like... It's less of a road thing, and I think more of it's like specific type. Just they ran some bad matchups in the mm-hmm. Houston playoff game. They picked a bad day to have a bad day. That's right. you know, it's, yeah. it, it, it just and I and I think that it was more about the situation that was at hand. And it was I don't think they're incapable of playing on the road to say it. You know, a long way to say that. And I think you're going to see them play better on the road because I think they're going to be able to. You know, it, it's going to be on their mind more. But that's not going to like with this defense at home. And you look at the schedule. Everybody talks about the schedule. How hard it is. They have one of the toughest road schedules in the NFL. Or no, they have one of the toughest home schedules in the NFL, okay. which yeah. is what you want. Yeah. You want those good teams. You want Mahomes. You want Dallas, Burrow, yeah. Dallas coming to Cleveland yeah. where we have a clear advantage with the crowd. Yeah, you're going to have some road. You're going, to, you're going to New Orleans. That's going to be tough. It's going to be loud. Derek Carr. Um, you're going to Pittsburgh, obviously, Cincinnati. You know, yeah. so it's like you got to deal with that. But I think – there's some uh, advantages to the schedule where it lines up uh, this season. All right, so a couple more things before we get you out of here. Don't want to yep. take up your whole day. Yep. Uh, a lot of talk in the off season about staying downtown, Brook Park Dome. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? And which way do you think they're going to go? Yeah, um, I. To me, I think it's inevitable that they end up in Brook Park. I think you know Jimmy's going to get what he what he wants, and I think. I, I see both ways. Uh, I, I live downtown. I love being able to walk to the games. It's great. The Browns need a stadium upgrade. Yeah. You know, it's just it, it, it is much like I love the Muni lot. I mean, we're we're gonna do a live pod down in the Muni <laughs> lot. We won, like, like I love it. But like, you go to other cities and you see how these stadiums are set up, and it's just like the Browns could have that in Brook Park. Yep. And it's not. It, it, there's so many bad faith arguments about it. They're like, oh, you're moving the Browns out of Cleveland. It no. You're moving the Browns 10 minutes away to the, by the airport, okay? <laughs> people are acting like uh, bringing in the Art Modell law. And, and, and <laughs> you know what it is? It's just people want to get their name in, in the paper and headlines <laughs> yeah. and, and that kind of stuff. To me, I, I think it's going to end up – there. I think the city of Cleveland is trying to make it seem like they did all they could yep. to keep them. 
it eventually, it, it, and no one wants to be the bad guy in this situation, you know? But I think if you pull Browns fans, I don't know. I mean, you guys talk to Browns fans all the time yeah. too. I think most people are cool with the Brook Park move. I don't think. Yeah. I know. I know we are. Yeah. Like I like, yeah, obviously if it stayed downtown, but like what, what would a renovation to the new state, if you're not putting a dome on That's it, then what like I mean. what, I mean, it obviously needs to be renovated, but what are you really doing enough to make it worth the I not getting the dome? You know, we're just stuck on the, the oh hey well you know this is downtown it's the lakefront it's I think like it's just that I guess the charisma of like, yeah. that idea I, and I think too if the, if the Browns and the, in Cleveland they work together if they move to Brook Park like you said it's ten minutes people can still go to downtown Cleveland game day set up some trams set up some uh, you know what yeah. I mean to, to to take people back and forth um, no I completely agree we actually we have a, a guy in our, our dog pack in our um, Discord who is a uh, he works. Uh, construction and stuff like that in Cleveland. He worked on the new Sherman Williams, Sherman Williams building. Mm -hmm. And he, he has a little bit of inside information in terms of like the structural integrity of the Brown stadium. I'm not saying it's falling apart. So don't go run away and say, it's going to collapse. Yes. (laughs) But he's saying what you don't see from just walking around, like in terms of, if you know what you're looking at it, it, they need an upgrade. Like they they definitely need an upgrade. We saw it in the, in I think a preseason game last year where it was, remember the one where it was raining really bad and they, there's water falling everywhere. Like, I mean, it, it needs an upgrade. And it's like, to me, it's not like if you're going to spend that much money, just go all the way. Yeah, go all the way, build a new one. Like you said, if you look at the plans, Jimmy wants to build hotels, a whole like community around the thing. It's close to the airport. All right, build it, build up the RTA, mm-hmm. which already goes to the airport, and have it go to the stadium. Like, 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 let's get creative with it. If they just end up renovating, it just to me would feel like they didn't go all the way in like they could. You know, right. mm-hmm. feels like a half measure. To yeah, me. for sure. Uh, and then, so last thing I want to talk about, mm-hmm. we got Coach Stefanski coming off his second uh, Coach of the Year award. Yep. I think AB is regarded as one of the not just the best, one of the best young GMs, but just one of the best GMs in general in, in the NFL, especially in terms of how he navigates the salary cap and all that. Yep. So what do you say to Browns fans who still think the sky is falling? This is Are the, there Browns fans who think the sky is yeah, falling? If you look, yes, yes. Like it is all corners of the internet. Like yeah. it, uh, anytime you post about Stefanski, he's the reason we've were, he's the reason we didn't go undefeated the last four years. <laughs> and I'm just like, how do, how do we get people to see that we have turned, we, we, I'm not saying we've, we're all the way around the corner. But we, we got we're we, we have turned. We are not we're not a laughing stock. We're not the Bears. You know, there's teams way worse off than the Browns are the last four years. I don't think. And look, I, I'm a Browns fan. I'm love Browns fans. This is not a critique of Browns fans. Mm-hmm. I don't think Browns fans know how to have a good team yet. <laughs> they, this is how it's we talked. This is how we talked about with the training camp stuff. Yes. We all we're so conditioned to have drama and. In, in 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 bad like all the like like QB controversy all this stuff we don't know how to just have a normal well run organized franchise which is what we have if you assume <laughs> that is what the Browns are right now mm-hmm. they are a normal well run NFL franchise who made the playoffs last year despite a wrath of injuries and now are getting everybody back this year and had again they did they have a sexy off season I think no because. Andrew Barry, all he had to do, he brought back the whole defense that was one of the best defenses in the NFL. He went and saw a need at wide receiver, that, uh, again, a position player that they didn't have, went out and got it, and and uh, filled some other holes. I, I would just, look, everybody's going to fan how they want to fan. I would just say, if you take a step back and you look around the NFL, the Browns are one of the more well-run organizations in football, right? And d- just even to say that, look where we were Eight years ago, yeah. they won one game in in, in two seasons, yes. and, and and now here we are. So it's just like it's going to be a special season. I would just tell people enjoy the ride. There's going to be ups. There's going to be downs. Uh, I mean, I week one last year, I was sitting by my man Shep here. But we went like three and out in the first drive and people were calling for DTR behind me. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, support your fucking quarterback. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, 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 don't like watch other games. It's like watch other NFL games and yes. you're going to see and I get it. We're so close to it. We care so much. The passion is there. I love that. Keep that forever, but just like try and kind of zoom out a little bit sometimes. Yeah. You know, because the, I can guarantee you the sky is not falling. They're so set up for success this year. Um I think it's going to be a very special year and I you know I can't wait. Yeah, man. I, there's times I come out of a, a Browns game. I'm watching at home, and I'm on X. Mm-hmm. And at, by the end of the game, I've been defending our guys so hard. It's like I just like I'm crawling out of the trenches. I, I just been taking. I'm 
bloodied, br- bruised up, and I'm like, God, I mean, can we just enjoy that we won? My mentions are muted a lot of the time. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a little secret to, 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 to the bastards. But yeah, it's look. It, it, in one way, that's so good because that just shows the passion the Browns fans yep. have, you know. And again, we're just not. They got to see it, you know. And we have seen it, but like. All right, now is the time to take that next step. It's win some playoff games, and let's kind of really make our mark on the season. So I can't wait. I think it's going to be a special year uh, starting next week, you know, heading out to West Virginia for the Green, uh, you know, Greenbrier training camp. Um, I mean, just – I mean, you guys talked to Watt already. I mean, he's so locked in. Like, even more, just having been around in the past couple of years, I've never seen him as dedicated – and like focused on what he has to do right here and also and i don't want to talk for him but like relieved like he just seems very much Mm -hmm. so comfortable and 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 i think that dorsey stefanski barry have done such a great job of making him that comfortable that he's just he's ready to play ball that's it and you know uh ready to really put on for the city and well we appreciate you sitting down i could sit here and talk browns football with you for I probably talk, like I can talk 10 browns hours for t- 24 hours <laughs> yes so uh, but we won't take up your whole day we appreciate yeah. you sitting down i'm sure everybody knows but for it in case there's somebody how do they find you on online yeah uh what's my uh p chops underscore on twitter x whatever you want to call it um yeah check out the Lockerverse app we'll be doing live streams from training camp i'm going to be good, like live stream uh training camp updates every every day from the Lockerverse app out at Greenbrier so that's going to be a great time I appreciate you guys I just want to give you guys your flowers yeah, thank you, I thank see you. your guys podcast on Twitter all the time I think you guys have great conversations very real conversations about yeah. the Browns that a lot of people some people don't want to admit that this team is good and fun and Deshaun's a good quarterback so I appreciate you guys for saying it no, we appreciate you sitting down we appreciate everything you do for the Browns it was nice to finally meet you and I uh, can't wait to get the season going yep let's do it boys Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com.